interesting materials that they use on containers, which is uh, aluminum, stainless steel, and uh, titanium. Titanium is the most expensive, um, but they're going to last and they're light. Uh, the benefit of the titanium is that they're light like aluminum, but they're strong like the stainless steel, but they charge you for them for sure. So um, some of my, a lot of my stuff is aluminum. Uh, some people, disclaimer, some people don't want to use aluminum because they say in the cooking of it, the gas is released that aids in uh, the Alzheimer's. And so uh, there's also been studies that came out that said that wasn't true. So that's uh, it's up to you what you choose to use. Um, I have used this for quite some time. And uh, if I were only going to take one item with me, it'd be this. Um, this is called the uh, Morris Kahansky Bush Pot. Um, $36 at Four Dog Stove. It's the name of the company that makes it. They have the reserved rights to make it by Morris Kahansky. Um, so uh, basically the design of this, it is a uh, anodized aluminum and they did it in the black. Um, the reason for that uses less fuel when you're burning uh, wood to uh, heat up to boil your water faster. Um, the next thing is it has a pour spout. So if you're using this to boil your water and things like that in, it's a little more controlled when you're spilling it out or, or to strain it. The next thing is you see this little tab that uh, goes onto the top of the lid. A lot of them are just flat and it makes it difficult to get that lid off of the stick when you got it still on the fire to check your stew. So on this one, they just added a little bend on it. So when you put the stick into there, it makes it far easier to actually get a hold of it. So a lot of little thought that went into this that didn't go into a lot of the other products. It also has a butterfly handle on it that is uh, adjustable. So if you need to uh, just use it, if that's all you have to drink out of, you have that as well, or just more control while you're using it to strain or to cook. Um, it also has a, the bail locked in five different positions. Um, so that also helps as well. Um, this is just something that, um, if you're going to do a lot of camping, in my opinion, you can get some pretty decent equipment, you know, do it. If you can't afford it, get the cheaper stuff. I, I've done that for many years, too. Um, this one is stainless steel, um, and it's supposed to have a lid over top of it. This is the typical Boy Scout uh, mess kit. Um, the downfall that I've seen, and I have an original one from 1950s that a guy had given me that he had been in the Boy Scouts. Um, and so the downfall I see on these is these little pots that they use, they're not really that sturdy. So when you go to hang them to boil water, a lot of times they'll spill out and put out your own fire because of the design of them. They're, they're too wide for the depth and the bail. So the, the pot itself is not that great of a design, but the, the pan is. So it's a really good uh, setup. Um, if you're just looking at doing something like a, uh, a basic uh, EDC or a small kit that you're going to carry, uh, if you carry a metal bottle um, with you, I think this one's aluminum. Uh, they have sta I have a stainless steel one too. Um, at REI, they have one made by Clean Canteen that's 40 ounces. And uh, it is a stainless steel bottle that you can uh, to boil in. It also has a wide mouth uh, brim that you can uh, cook in if you had to. Um, and then you can add something like uh, this little cup. I got them at Walmart. They got some at REI too, and they cost about three times as much, and they're pretty much the same thing in my opinion. Um, but the, uh, the clean canteen fits inside of it perfectly like that. And this one, you see there's a big difference. But it makes for a good cook kit that you can carry in an easy pouch that you have something that you could drink out of as well as cook in if you had to. Um, and uh, like I said, I'm a bargain shopper, so I got this, and uh, to be honest with you, I think it was a, maybe a, a, an Indian Hindu type thing, I'm not too sure, because it has a lot of uh, markings carved into the side of it, but um, this is just a little stainless steel um, container I found at Goodwill, and so uh, for me, it works perfect, I've used it, as you can tell, quite a bit, stainless steel, I can put water into it, boil it just fine, and, uh, and it does the trick. So you don't have to go out and buy name bearing products and spend all kinds of money. You can go Goodwill, yard sale, look for the right materials that you need and make your own kit uh, that suits your needs. Um, something else I'd recommend too, to add in with your pot. Um, a friend of mine just made this little screen. Uh, the reason for that is that I can put it underneath my pot 
gives my it gives me something nice and sturdy to hold my pot on that isn't going to waver as much as say a log that eventually is going to burn up and fall. But it also the, the flame is its hottest two to three inches from the, the bottom of the flame. And so if you raise it up that diameter, you're actually going to heat your water much faster than you would if it was directly on the ground with the flames around it. Um, I have another one in here. I'll show you real quick. The same guy made me, uh, he made that initial one and said, you know what, I think I got a better design for you. or you know somebody who does uh, metal work, you can ask somebody to make you some stuff that works just fine and you don't have to go out and buy it. Um, I guess I can show you two of these uh, uh, traps. Um, I tend to carry these and these with me. Um, these are called the 110 Convairs and these are called a yo-yo fish trap. Um, when it comes to going out into the woods, and uh, we're talking about maybe sustainability, self-reliance, um, survival, uh, to be able to produce meat is going to be your best uh, chance on protein, which is really what your body needs. Um, so these traps are designed for a, uh, an instant kill so that you can produce meat. Um, and for those vegetarians in the room, I free apologize. <laughs> so uh, the, the purpose of this is to, uh, it basically closes like a scissor. And, uh, and snacks on the small prey animal. You can also use these if you absolutely had to for a foot, um, but it's designed for a small animal like a squirrel, a uh, smaller possum, smaller raccoon. Um, and then you just squeeze these springs, folds over on itself. This is called the uh, trigger, and it's called the dog. It latches down onto that. And then you, uh, you would have your bait on it prior to setting this. Um, I tend to use, if I'm, uh, last time I used these, I was trying to get some raccoons. I used a uh, rose raccoon and armadillo that were traveling around a pond. This is just a fake crawl daddy. And I put it onto the tag, or onto the trigger, so that when um, it was set, I actually laid it like this. So the crawl dad was laying in the bottom, the water was flowing, and it looked like the crawl dad was moving. So I had a higher chance of catching something um, by sticking its head or hand in there to uh, hit that. And what happens is it just closes like scissors and the spring forces it shut. You gotta be careful too when you're using these because you can't hurt yourself. It does have a lot of force on them. In one of my videos, I actually uh, accidentally released one of these on my hand, <laughs> but I kept my hand on the spring so it didn't snap all the way. But the guy who was with me did start laughing because it was pretty funny. <laughs> These uh, yo-yo fish traps, they're actually uh, illegal in a couple places, but not here. We're in Tennessee where I'm from. And uh, so basically, it's just set up, a uh, very simple design, has a tension spring on the inside. And so you can uh, tie these up into a tree. And I added this uh, monofilament line at the end. So you tie that up into a tree, you pull this uh, string out, and it tightens that spring. And then you lock this little piece on that little tag right there. You can see that. So uh, it's hanging up in the tree, your little worms just dangling right into the water, and then once the fish just pulls on it just a little, it releases that trigger and it pulls it up for you. Mm -hmm. So it sets the hook and catches the fish. And so you can get these pretty cheap. I think they come in a pack of a dozen for 20, 25 bucks, and they take up no space. I have uh, three of them. Um, you can also use these as a spring snare if you had to by setting it onto a tree and set your snare line so that when something triggers it, it pulls it up and catches it for you as well. Um, that's what they were designed for. Uh, on my channel as well, I have about a dozen videos on primitive traps that you can uh, make yourself. Uh, disclaimer on those, it is illegal to primitively trap unless it is a true survival scenario unless you were have to use that as a means. But that being said, uh, it's kind of hard to practice primitive trapping unless you go out and do that. So uh, that, that risk is up to you. So um, I do have uh, plenty of uh, uh, information on there as well. Um, I think that about covers everything. You guys got any questions of any sort? How long do the yo-yo fish traps last? 
How heavy can you catch something that it needs to be half a dozen? Um, that's going to vary on the string that is on it. You can take that string off uh, once you pull the string all the way out, and you can change the string. Um, the monofilament string that I have on there is for about 10 pounds. Um, most often what I've seen caught with them is going to be the sunfish or the perch, the, the smaller fish that tends to be up on the top. Um, you know, the little uh, bluegills, those types of fish. But if you're in that situation where you are lost and you are using this as a means to rely on food, you're going to appreciate that little small fish. Yeah. Uh, Thanks, question, um, can you talk about your Nora knife? How do you spell Nora? Uh, Mora. M O R A. No problem. Anybody else got any questions? What do you think? SOS completely gone? Uh, no, uh, the SOS survival with, uh, well, no, I have SAS. SOS, as in signaling. Yes, uh, people still do teach that skill as well. Um, the challenge with uh, uh, using, um, say, if you're using, say, Morse code or you're doing signaling, you have to, it has to be in a visible area from above. And so you do have to seek out that, that visible area. Um, most often, um, if you're reading like a lot of the books that I have, it talks about really just wearing or carrying a lot of really bright colors with you. Because a lot of times when we go into the woods, we tend to carry a lot of camouflage, wear camouflage, we want to blend in with our surroundings. It's just a little better equipment most often if you get military surplus. Um, but uh, if you pack bright colors with you, you can uh, use that as a contrast. As, is triple X and that take place of SOS? Well, um, that was the one that I was uh, mainly taught. Um, I have seen the SOS uh, out on like a beach. You carve it out, fill it in with seaweed, grasses, or rocks to make it visible from above. Um, there's also what I uh, taught um, uh, some young boys that I took out was um, a signal fire and how to build a signal fire. You do that in sets of threes, evenly spaced, but for the time and uh, the design purposes, I, I couldn't really display that here. Uh, but um, I would tend to go with bright colors. The the, uh, the SOS will work, but you have to have overhead view or it's not really effective. And so if you're going to be in a woodland environment, it may not be as good um, of an option compared to having something high contrast. Uh, any other questions? So, okay. Is there a guideline on as far as water that like comes through? how much you would need. Um, there is, uh, but I'm not too familiar with it when it comes to temperature here in Texas. Uh, I know it's a lot, <laughs> much more than, uh, than you'd think. Um, uh, when I took, um, uh, I took three guys out with me and I took uh, uh, two gallons of water and it was nowhere near enough and we just did overnight. Um, so, uh, and that wasn't peak summer. Um, but any, any means is going to be good. Um, as well as there's far more information that I didn't go over. This is just what I could cover in this time that I prepared for. Uh, um, um, my, my question is, if you're going out in the woods and, and you're not going to do any, you know, trapping the squirrels or anything like that, but you want to eat, what would you bring with you? Okay, a uh, typical simple meal um, that I tend to go with is a uh, Roman noodles. It's already dehydrated, has no weight, and all you got to do is boil it in water. Um, a lot of already pre-dehydrated meals are going to be kind of your go-to. You can also, in uh, Walmart, um, if you go over to where I believe the soup sections are, they have already pre-packaged like uh, rice and broccoli and chicken and broccoli and all that type of stuff that are already in packages. I think they're like $1.50. Those are good meals as well. I tend to um, try to cook a, a little little more intricate meals when I'm out. Um, I, uh, I, I took a New York strip with me, fried it on a rock, and made fajitas. I cooked the, uh, the tortillas on the rock as well. I cooked corn, beans, rice over the fire. Um, I've taken a rabbit out with me and smoked it um, over a bed of coals. Uh, I've done multiple different things that I have videos on as well, and I go through the steps and processes that I use. Most of the time, if it's uh, just doing lunch or something like that, I'll just use a already dehydrated type uh, meal. Um, I've also seen where a lot of guys will get a dehydrator and they'll pre-make their chili or their spaghetti or anything like that. Cover your dehydrator with wax paper or uh, parchment paper, and then you can spread it out inside of that and dehydrate it. And then you can break it up into portion meals and then you just add warm water over a 30 minute period and it'll rehydrate 
to actual spaghetti or chili. Um, so that way you cut your weight and you also cut down on it actually spoiling because you pre dehydrated it. Um, and you can do things like rice, hamburger, corn, things of that nature. Um, what do you have, Liz? Um, how long would you have to boil the water? All right, um, typically uh, what you have to do is once you get the water onto the flame, as soon as it starts to make a, like a rolling boil, so as soon as it boils up and it looks like it's moving good, then it's safe to drink. It just has to hit that point. So, on higher elevations that changes, but that's not an issue. What about PB2? What's that? PB2, the peanut butter that's... Oh, already, already like in, it's already like a, like a real thick paste similar to like the... No, powder, powder. Oh, water I've water. never used that. It doesn't weigh anything as tons of protein. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, a inexpensive. lot of... Inexpensive. Yeah, inexpensive? Well, it's about six bucks. Oh, that, uh, okay. Yeah, I've seen a lot of guys, they'll carry a small container of uh, peanut butter as in their, their haversack or their backpack uh, just as a backup because peanut butter is really high in protein and the fats that we need. And it can also be used for trapping. Because when you're doing uh, trapping, you have a higher benefit of getting something when you're offering something to them that they want but they can't find in their natural environment. So uh, that's your benefit there. So.